I'm conscious that I haven't really introduced myself on this channel yet, so in this video I'm going to share 50 random facts about me. If you're here for videos about investing, personal finance and happiness, maybe skip this one, but do hang around if you're interested and please do leave a comment below sharing a random fact about you too so I can get to know you as well as you getting to know me. So I'm going to run through these 50, they're all over the place, they're very random some of them, but I hope you enjoy watching. My feet are different sizes. There's a size difference of three shoe sizes between each foot. Now this one freaks a lot of people out, but I was born with leg length inequality. I underwent some quite painful surgery when I was about 12 to correct the difference in the length of my legs, but sadly they couldn't correct the difference in the size of my feet. So I have a size 11 on my right and a size eight and a bit, about an eight on my left and it makes shoe shopping quite expensive and quite tricky, <laughs> but it's a hangover from being born with different size legs. I worked as a bouncer when I was a student at university. It was for a student union bar, so the work was never particularly dangerous. But as a result, I know how to remove anybody from any room, which is quite a useful skill to have. I can strip and reassemble a machine gun blindfolded. Two men, shrimp in 10 hours, less what you spend on gas. Dangerous Sergeant! I was a cadet for a few years as a teenager and they taught us all about handling guns as well as navigation and how to sleep under a tarpaulin in the winter and get hypothermia, all useful skills to have. I've run three marathons and two ultra distance marathons. I took up running back in 2012 as a way to get fit and I ran the London Marathon a year later in 2013 in a time of three hours and 39 minutes, not bad for someone with two different size feet. And then a year later, ran my first ultra distance marathon, a 50 kilometer race in the New Forest. My longest run to date is 50 miles, which took me 11 hours and 11 minutes. I didn't do very well at school. I did poorly with my GCSEs. I failed my A-levels. I'm not very academically minded. I found a bit of a loophole which got me to university doing a couple of years at a local technical college for a higher national diploma. But I've really struggled in school until I discovered business and finance and then something clicked and it became much easier to learn. I've earned two chartered titles during my career to date. One was the chartered financial planner title, which I still hold. The other chartered wealth manager, which I've subsequently given up after I fell out with the awarding body. But it's not bad for someone who didn't learn good at school. I give you the Derek Zoolander Center for Kids Who Can't Read Good. I didn't fly on a plane until I was 21 years old. All of our family holidays as a kid were either in Devon or catching a ferry across to France. But after I graduated, my girlfriend at the time, her family, invited me to join them in their Portuguese villa for a holiday. So I flew for the first time on my own. I love flying, but I hate airports. I learned how to scuba dive when I was on my honeymoon in the Maldives. And then when we came back to the UK, I got my advanced open water diving qualification diving in freezing conditions in Brackelsham Bay in West Sussex and I've since dived in South Africa with ragged tooth sharks without a cage which was one of the scariest but also one of the most exciting moments of my life. I wrote my first book when I was 27 years old. It became WH Smith Business Book of the Month which was fantastic because it meant all my friends kept sending me photos of the book on bookshelves at train stations and airports around the country. Uh, that book was called The Money Tree. I've written a couple more books since. I've also co-authored a book and self-published a few and contributed a chapter to a book and I would love to write more books in the future. I directed a feature length documentary which won a film festival award in the United States. It was called Boom. It was all about the retirement experiences of the post-war baby boomer generation. And it was shown in 11 theatres around the UK as well as a screening at the Northern Ireland Parliamentary Assembly, which was pretty cool. Julie Waters once gave me a £5 tip for carrying her Christmas tree to her car when I was working at the local garden centre as a teenager. I saw her again last year in a local cafe and she didn't recognise me. I've been married twice. My first wedding was in a castle in Shropshire and we separated about four years later. My second marriage is going much better. I can juggle. My friend at school taught himself how to juggle, so I went home that night and taught myself. I kept going until I could do it. I can only juggle with three balls, so I'd love to be able to juggle with four, or maybe with knives. 
I've only been punched in the face once in my life and it was by a girl. I was rescuing a drunk chap who was being beaten up on the ground in Winchester High Street when I was at university. The 10 blokes who were kicking him and punching him, not a problem, but I wasn't expecting the punch that the girl threw and she got me right in the mouth. <laughs> I've walked away from a high-speed car crash. It was New Year's Eve many years ago. I was driving to meet some mates to go go-karting and an elderly lady driving in the other direction turned across the road into her driveway right in front of me when I was doing about 70 miles an hour. The airbag hurt more than anything else, although my neck still crunches when I turn my head. I was born in Birmingham. I don't remember anything about living there. We moved to Gloucester when I was about a year old and thankfully I didn't pick up the Brummy accent. I'm allergic to peanuts. I go into anaphylactic shock if I eat one, but it's been about 25 years since I've had that happen. And it makes me wonder, do you grow out of a peanut allergy? Uh, the caterer says she doesn't know how this could have happened. But I feel like I ate a loaf of nuts. I mean, even my tongue is swollen. I suffer from agoraphobia, which is a fear of being in places where escape is not easy, although it is getting better with time and with practice. I gave up drinking alcohol about 17 years ago and I haven't touched a drop since. I do occasionally dream about having a pint of beer, but I have to say I don't miss it. The pain of the hangovers was starting to outweigh the benefits and the enjoyment of drinking, so I just stopped teetotal, haven't looked back since. But I told my wife I wouldn't drink tonight. Besides, I got a big day tomorrow. But, but you guys have a great time. The furthest I've ever been from home is Margate in South Africa, just along the coast from Durban. I've been to South Africa three times, going to Kruger National Park on each visit, and it's a beautiful country. I've always been a night owl and I hate early mornings, but I get up relatively early every morning to help get the kids into school. Plus society seems to frown on late risers. If I had a choice, I'd stay in bed until nine o'clock every day and stay up till midnight or later every night. I've got a 14 year old daughter, a 12 year old stepdaughter and a nine year old stepson. And along with my wife, they are the most important things in the world. While I'm a chartered financial planner and director of a firm of chartered financial planners, I'm no longer authorised to give advice, financial advice to members of the public. I decided about a year ago to give up my authorisations to focus on creating content and also building my businesses. I'm an ambivert, which means I've got traits of extroverts and introverts. I can happily speak on stage to hundreds of people or network in a large crowded room, but afterwards I need to recharge my batteries and find some peace and solitude. So I love being with people, but I also love and crave being alone. I don't know how to speak any foreign languages. I studied German in school but failed miserably, even with the help from my German teacher during my exams. She would switch off the tape recorder, tell me what to say and press record again and I still failed. I do know a few words of Afrikaans because my first wife was South African, but she used to speak Afrikaans when she was in a bad mood with me, so I mostly know the swear words. My favourite author is the Japanese author Haruki Marakami and his three-part novel 1Q84 is the most incredible thing I've ever read. I'm currently reading a collection of his short stories. I've only ever been to one rock concert. It was Red Hot Chili Peppers live in Hyde Park. My guilty celebrity crush is Anthea Turner. She lives locally and one time walked past me in the high street and gave me a cheeky smile and I have witnesses. I believe in the existence of extraterrestrial life and that the existence of aliens will be confirmed at some point in my lifetime. The only instrument I know how to play is the ukulele. After years of failing to learn to play the guitar, I bought myself a uke and taught myself how to play it by watching YouTube tutorials. I am an oldest child. I have a younger sister, Emma, who also works in the family business, but I'm also the favourite child. As well as being a part owner of the family business, a firm of chartered financial planners, I also own a digital marketing agency called Bamford Media. I've got a scar on my left arm where a friend threw a dart into me, and I've got scars on my back from when a friend used a golf club to hit a dead hedgehog into my back, and I might need to reconsider my definition of friends.
When I grow up, I want to live by the sea. I once met Phil Collins. We were chatting to his wife and baby daughter in the supermarket. The daughter was Lily Collins, who's turned out now to be a famous Hollywood actress. And Phil Collins suddenly appeared alongside and had a chat with us as well. I'm a huge fan of his music, particularly his Disney soundtracks for Tarzan and Brother Bear, and also the songs of Genesis. My first job after the obligatory paper round was working washing dishes in a French restaurant for a completely unhinged French chef called Jean-Pierre. He used to send me off to the supermarket every night to buy his cigars. The best part of that job was getting to eat the leftover trays of potato gratin at the end of the evening. I am definitely a dog person. We've got two Labradors, Rosie and Luna, and we're getting a Springer Spaniel puppy in the new year, which we're very excited about. We're calling him Baby Yoda. My family comes from Bristol and I support Bristol Rovers FC. I was match day mascot back in 1989 versus Fulham and I remember vividly being past the football in the tunnel and being told to run and keep on running until I reached the centre of the pitch in case all the footballers behind me flattened me. And then I got to watch the match sitting on an old wooden bench and every time the coaches and substitutes would leap up just in case a goal was about to be scored, I would fall on the floor because the whole bench would tip over. Uh, fun times. I volunteer for our local chamber of commerce where I help to organise the annual Christmas lights switch on. I'm also a founding event director of the local park run and I am chairman of a local charity responsible for creating 60 acres of public parkland. So my volunteering duties keep me quite busy. The only bones I've broken in my body are a couple of fingers uh, and it happened when I was putting the wheelie bin out as a child and the cat tripped me up, ran under my legs and tripped me up and I dropped a full wheelie bin on my hand and broke two fingers. I got a day off school, I went into work that day with my mum who was working in a board game factory and I remember it was the day that the Berlin Wall came down. I love open water swimming. Last year I swam in two river races and also a race in a lake which left me very very sick afterwards but I do still enjoy it. I've never been caught speeding, but I was pulled over by the police on the day I passed my driving test. I was showing off my new driving license on my new car to some friends in a local car park and they stopped me for driving recklessly, gave me some very strong words of advice and since then I have to say I have been the model driver. <laughs> I've got perfect eyesight, I've never needed glasses or contact lenses, but I do struggle to see at dusk, uh, to the extent I have to stop and pull the car over for a bit, just at that time when it's going from daytime to nighttime. I also struggle in sunlight and I always need to wear sunglasses when the sun comes out. Making my own documentary taught me something about filmmaking that has automatically ruined every TV show and movie I have watched since. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't want to ruin it for you too, but it's really frustrating and I just can't put it back in the box. I was born on the 4th of July 1979, which was a Wednesday. That makes my star sign cancer. I don't believe in astrology. My favourite Batman is Christian Bale and my favourite James Bond is Daniel Craig. My favourite Star Wars trilogy is the second one, despite Jar Jar Binks. Woo! I didn't grow a beard for the first time until I was 35 years old and in the past six years it's been quite interesting to watch the beard go from red to mostly grey. You shall not pass! I've got tinnitus ringing in both ears and as a result I need to have constant background white noise or music playing, otherwise it drives me absolutely insane. I've lost count of the number of times I've appeared on radio shows, but I've only been on television once on Sky News this summer talking about the coronavirus antibody test. I've definitely got a face for radio, it's definitely more in my comfort zone than television is. So there you have it, 50 random facts about me. I'd love to hear one about you as well. Pop it in the comments down below and I will respond, of course. Do take a second, please, to subscribe to this channel. I usually make videos about personal finance, investing and happiness. This one was a little bit different. Until next time, I'm Martin Bamford and when it comes to your money, the more you know, the faster it can grow.